And joining me now uh, is Ray Carey. She is the executive director of the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force. Ray, thanks for joining me. Happy to join you, particularly in Pride Month, Carl. <laughs> Absolutely. Happy Pride. Thank you very much. Happy Pride to you and all of our listeners. Absolutely. And anybody out there who's interested can go to your website, thetaskforce.org, and sign up for important updates and other materials. They should probably go to your website every day because you've got a lot of great content up there. They can also follow you on Twitter at the Task Force. Uh, Ray, one of the things that uh, was, you know, in the media this this week, uh, last week, uh, was the issue of of blood blood donors. Um, yeah. It, since uh, the dawn of HIV/AIDS, uh, uh, gay men have been kept from donating blood, even as technology has, you know, advanced. Um, and you all were right there in that fight. Why don't you give us an update on the hearings and what ended up happening? Absolutely, and thanks for raising this. A lot of people around the country uh, aren't aware that this happened. Right. Um, but Health and Human Services had an advisory committee on blood safety and availability that held hearings uh, to look at the issue of whether or not they should revise what is really a lifelong ban uh, against uh, men who have had sex with men since 1977. And, uh, a year before I was you? born, by the way. Yeah, I, I was going to say, probably uh, <laughs> before a number of people uh, who are listening in tonight were even born. Um, so that's a long time to count back, certainly. Um, and they, uh, they looked at the issue, had uh, looked at, uh, you know, were presented with uh, information and unfortunately came out with a recommendation against lifting the lifetime blood ban that has been in place. Unfortunately, you know, there are so many people in this country who want to be able to give blood. It's actually not unfortunate that they want to give it. It's unfortunate that they can't. Right. And it's estimated that 219,000 more pints of blood could be made available annually if this ban was lifted. And even if they went to a one-year deferral, instead of a full, you know, back to 1977, but just going back one year, 90,000 pints of blood would be available. More, wow. more pints of blood would be available. So, you know, in many cases, as, as folks around the country enter into uh, an emergency situations and need blood, this can be an issue of life or death. So the hearing took place, and what ultimately was the outcome? The outcome is that they decided to uh, not uh, lift the ban, and uh, we and others expressed uh, disappointment and, in our case, uh, anger about that. The Red Cross uh, was one of many organizations as really the primary uh, collector of uh, blood donations around the country had written a letter and, and stated that they wanted the ban overturned. They, of course, will follow whatever law is in place, uh, but they, they expressed their disappointment as well. So. It means, unfortunately, that many people across this country who really want to help out uh, and contribute blood and, uh, won't be able to do so. And, and uh, you know, I've talked with uh, men across the country who say, you know, at my law firm, at my corporation, we have these blood donations. Right. And it's humiliating that I uh, either can't, I can't donate, I have to come up with an excuse, or people know and they look at me differently. And you know, this is in a workplace where we have made a lot of advances and people just shouldn't be faced with this situation or a situation where they can't contribute their blood in, in the way that they would want to. Because straight men and women uh, can, I, I believe they have restrictions as well based on sexual behavior, but those restrictions lapse after a time, isn't that right? Well, we want our consistent rules. Right. There, you know, when we're looking just at the, the number of people who are eligible to donate blood, it's less than 40% of Americans. Out of that group that's even eligible to give blood, less than 10% donate on an annual basis. So certainly there's an interest in expanding the number of people who are giving blood, uh, especially because, you know, blood really only has a shelf life of uh, about a month and a half, about 42 days. So we and, and many other organizations that are not just uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender organizations have an interest in increasing the blood supply in this country, a safe blood supply. Absolutely. I mean, this is not about, uh, you know, opening up uh, any kind of danger or anything. I mean, this country has come so far uh, over the last, I guess the blood ban has been in place since the, the mid-80s, early 80s. Um, this is not about putting anybody in jeopardy. This is about uh, updating a policy that just hasn't been touched in a very long time. 
That's right. And as you noted at the start of this conversation, science has changed. Science has advanced. And any blood donated today goes through a series of steps in the screening process, the first of which is that a potential donor is asked a series of questions to determine their risk level. Then all blood is screened. Um, they, uh, some blood centers actually use multiple tests for HIV. And the current testing methods can detect antibodies uh, in a very short period of time. So, the, you know, the blood supply uh, has been kept safe with practices. Uh, we simply want there to be a larger number of people who are able to donate blood in this country.